Hey, welcome everybody. Good morning or good afternoon. And I hope you're still all in good health. Um, today we have the, uh, the third session of the Uniface Universe Webinar 2021. And this session is all about mobile applications and Uniface. Uh, this uh, session uh, will contain a demo uh, of by Jason Huggins. I think you know him all quite well. And uh, Jason will, t will tell in his uh, very um, humoristic way how to build a uh, Uniface mobile application. After that, um, a Greek customer of Uniface, Hedonic Zeus, uh, will explain uh, how they built their mobile application with Uniface in a very rapid way and successfully deployed them for their customers. So I think all in all a very interesting program uh, for all of us to watch and, and learn from. And of course, when you have questions or uh, remarks, please use the, the chat lines. They are open uh, right now and the Uniface team is uh, waiting to, uh, to answer them uh, as we speak. So please go ahead, enjoy the, the sessions and the presentations and uh, see, you, uh, see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, Tom. My name is Jason Huggins and today we're going to look at how to package your Uniface applications ready for deployment on a mobile device. We'll start by recapping the importance of mobile solutions. We'll then look at the different mobile development and deployment options. And finally, we'll look at how this works with Uniface. So, why are mobile solutions important? These continue to play an important role across everybody's lives, whether it's just for social interaction or interacting with business critical solutions. We continue to see an increase in demand for mobile solutions. For solutions we typically use, such as desktop solutions or web solutions, it's not uncommon to now expect there's also a mobile equivalent. For this reason, it is important to think about and continue delivering mobile solutions to meet the needs of your users. So, what are the options for mobile development? Well, there are three main categories. The first is to build a web solution and deliver that through a mobile browser. This has the advantage of using standard technologies such as HTML, JavaScript and CSS to allow you to quickly build a solution. However, it does have the disadvantage that the solution won't have immediate access to the underlying device functionality, for example, accessing the contacts. The alternative is to build a native solution using a device manufacturer's software development kit, unlocking the full power of the device and giving you full access to the underlying functionality. A disadvantage here, however, is that you have to have knowledge of those underlying SDKs and you will have a code line per vendor. It is also harder to then get consistency in the look and feel between the different devices. The third option, and that chosen for Uniface solutions, is to go for a hybrid approach, taking the best of both worlds, using the simplicity of standard technologies such as HTML, CSS and JavaScript to build the content, wrapped in a native container to give you the access to the underlying device functionality. So what does this look like in Uniface terms? Well, I start by building my DSP solution and utilize responsive techniques so that the pages will display correctly on a mobile device. I package that using a hybrid framework of which there are many to choose from. This results in a package that I can deploy to my mobile device directly or via one of the app stores. If we look at the packaging stage in a little more detail, then we can see the steps are quite simple. There are two main options. The quickest is to take the URL of your DSP solution and pass that to the hybrid wrapper. This has the advantage of pure simplicity. However, you should consider that everything will be downloaded from the server. A small but significant variation to this is to deploy the DSP runtime and your static content by passing these to your hybrid framework. 
This has the advantage of quicker startup and response times because the application no longer needs to download everything from the server. So let's take a look at some of this theory in action. We'll start with the application I wish to deploy. It's just a standard DSP application. And when I run it, we see this page. I can log in and I see my application. Now I've used a CSS framework that is responsive. So if I reduce this browser window to a mobile size or similar, then we can see that it reflows and this would be suitable for a mobile device. So let's look at how we can build a package using a hybrid framework. In this case, I'm going to use Cordova. As we can see on the screen, there are just a few steps to actually do the packaging. I've already done the first step, which is installing Node.js and then installing Cordova. So I'll now do the remaining steps. I've got my folder here, which is my development area for Cordova, which is already installed. So I will start by creating the Cordova project. And I'll call this Uniface. We take a look in this folder. We can see it's created a basic application. The www folder is the web root and this is where you can place your HTML assets. In this case, I don't want to use this web folder. What I'm going to do is point at my Uniface URL. If I open config.xml, we can see in config.xml, we've got a basic configuration. Now, something I'm going to need to add, and I'll explain this shortly, is this section. If I copy my URL, And go back here we can see the content and the source attribute so I will paste my URL in here now because I'm using HTTP because I don't have TLS set up on this web server then I have to have this configuration that I put in earlier to say to allow clear text traffic so this is the bare minimum I need to do in this case. If I had a HTTPS set up, I wouldn't need this extra configuration line. The other things I can do in here, I'll set the unique ID for my application. So com dot uniface so that's just a unique name. give it a label uniface iot and i could then fill in things like the description the author information the website and and so on i'll just keep it as simple as this for now so if i save this and if we go back to look at what the instructions say so i've moved to that folder and what i need to do is add the platform in this case, it's showing the browser as the platform. However, I'm going to use Android. So I go to the folder, and from the command line, I say Cordova platform add Android.
and we can see that Android has now been added to this Cordova project. I'm now ready to build it and run it. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use an Android emulator to show the application running. So I type Cordova run Android and this will build and deploy the application and then run it. So the build has now completed and it's been deployed to my device and so we should see it start. Now you will have noticed that the startup was a little bit slow there and this is because of it having to download uh, many of the assets at the start. I can log in and we can see that the application will behave as expected. So as you can see the process is actually very straightforward. Now I've mentioned that the files are pulled from the server, so let's just show that that's actually happening. If I connect to that device using the Chrome debugger, we can see it's detected that application running on that device. If we do an inspect, when we look at the sources tab, we can see that everything has indeed been pulled from the server. So now let's look at the steps we can take to actually make all of that static content local and the Uniface DSP runtime. If we go into the Cordova web directory, we can just see a standard web structure but it has none of my Uniface assets. If I go to my Uniface folder, so here's my web directory for Uniface, we can see we have the standard structure. Now everything here is my static content and the common folder has the Uniface runtime in. Mobile is the bridge I've added and I'll talk about that once we've copied it over. So I'll get all of my static content from my server and copy it into the Cordova web directory. Okay, so those files have all copied over. And the functionality we're going to be making use of is a DSP view functionality. It allows you to place a div on your HTML page and load a view of the DSP into that. Go into the mobile folder. We can see I've created an index page and I have this umob.js which has my functionality for loading that view. So if I open both of these, what we can see is I have this function called load Uniface app and it says what is the URL of the WRD, what is the DSP that I want to load and what div do I want to assign that to. So then there's just some functionality here so on the Uniface runtime, the Uniface API set the WRD URL, create an instance of my DSP calling my operation mob exec and I'll show you that shortly and then it says create a view of that DSP using the layout that is going to be passed back by the mob exec operation and then load it into the div that's on the index page. Once that's ready you then say view.show and that loads the DSP. Now this is just boilerplate code and can just be reused on any application. We take a look at the index page itself. We can see it's just some basic HTML. 
it includes the Uniface runtime, so Uniface.js and the basic DSP CSS. I have an on device ready event which says when the device is ready, call load Uniface app, which was the function we just saw in the umob.js file. We can see the path to the WRD, the DSP I want to load, and the div I want to place the view in. Come back over here, we can see in the main body, there's my div, and this is where the view of that DSP will be displayed. Finally, I have the standard Cordova JavaScript, which allows the interaction with the underlying device APIs. The final change I need to make is pointing the config at this file. So if I go back to the Cordova project root, I've got my config.xml, I edit that, and I change this path which is relative to the www path to mobile slash index dot html. If I save that, if we take a look at the Uniface code, If we look at mob exec, we can see it's very similar to the standard exec I have in this component. They both activate the login screen and they both apply it to the DSP container called DSP main. The addition on mob exec is that this one returns the view information, so very similar to the layout information of this DSP, and it passes back the container that's being assigned. The view functionality allows you to have different views, not just a single view that you specify in a design layout. So let's rebuild this application and see it running. If I go back to my command line, I can say Cordova run Android and this will implicitly rebuild and redeploy the application to my emulator. So the build has completed and we can see it's now deploying to the Android device and starting. And the view has loaded. I can log into the application. It's responded quicker given the assets are all held locally this time. And let's take a look at what the debugger shows. And we can see this time that all of the assets are being pulled from the local device. So it's less network traffic and a quicker response. The final thing I'll show is the use of the device APIs, because after all, that was the whole point of using hybrid instead of just a plain HTML application. In this case, we'll take a look at the plugin called Toast, which gives a nice pop-up message. It pops up briefly and then disappears. As you can see, this plugin has various options. Um, we'll just do a basic test just to demonstrate the concept. To add a plugin to the project is very straightforward. So you can see the two lines here. So I'll do that. Okay, we can see that the plugin has been installed. We'll now call the prepare as documented. A 
and that completes. If we go back to the documentation for the plugin, we can see a few examples here. So for example, window plugin toe show long bottom and some parameters. So if we go to Uniface, I've prepared this already. If I go to my login screen. We can see I've added a web operation called toast message. And here we can see I'm calling the same thing window.plugin.toast show long bottom and with some text. And I've got a call to that in my exec. So web activate dollar instance name toast message. Welcome to the IoT app. So if I recompile that, and again, rebuild the application and deploy it because it's now got a plugin functionality. So Cordova run Android. When the application starts and a login screen loads, we should see a toast message pop up at the bottom saying, welcome to the IoT app. So the application is now being deployed to the mobile device. And there's the toast message. So as you can see, building the packages is actually very straightforward and we can see them running perfectly on the Android emulator. When you're ready to deploy onto a real device or deploy to the app stores, then you can go to your Cordova directory. If I go back to the root. We can see the platforms. So whether it was Android, iOS, you'll see a platform folder. If I go into here, go into app, build, outputs, APK, this is where my built object will be. At the moment we're in development mode, so it's in debug mode, so if I go into this folder, there we can see our debuggable APK. If I was in release mode, then there'll be a release folder with the release version. So to summarize, Taking your DSP web application built in a responsive style from the browser to a mobile device is actually quite straightforward because we use hybrid techniques and by using one of the hybrid frameworks, deploying is a very straightforward process. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Jason. That was very uh, interesting and also yeah, always the way you present is uh, very uh, inspiring for, uh, for all of us. Um, so now we know how to uh, develop and deploy uh, mobile applications with Uniface. Let's see how this works in practice. So we have uh, invited uh, a Greek customer of Uniface, Hellenic Zeus. Um, and Hellenic Zeus built a mobile application with Uniface over the last year. And actually it's already in production. And from what we've heard, it's very successful. So we look very much forward about uh, your experiences and uh, how you built your mobile application with Uniface, so please go ahead. I'd like to welcome Hellenic Zeus. Um, so Thomas from Hellenic Zeus, who's going to talk about their mobile development um, in their business. Um, so I'll start by letting Thomas introduce himself. Hello, my name is Thomas Bakis. I'm the solution architect in the Hellenic Zeus uh, group. Uh, Hellenic Zeus is a company that uh, owns about six hotels and it's a DMC company uh, based in Crete and the latest eight years we are uh, working only with uh, Uniface. Okay. So you're in the um, like travel and leisure industry. Um, what would you say differentiates you from your competitors? Uh, first of all, in, uh, in Greek market, there are not a lot of uh, 
there are not a lot of uh, mobile application uh, focused on the, the travel industry. Actually, the main applications are not from Greece. They are from uh, different uh, places. We have uh, uh, from Germany and uh, mostly from uh, England. The last year, there are a lot of uh, companies here in Greece that they are creating uh, software solutions for the travel industry and for uh, the hotels. But in most cases, they are only covering part of the, part of the business and not the whole business. Our solution can cover the whole business. Um, it covers the PMS, the POA systems of a hotel. And the last three years, we have created a lot of mobile applications in order to cover the maintenance, uh, to have a rich application in order for the customers to communicate with the hotel. And the last two years, of course, we have some COVID functionality uh, in order for the customers to avoid to make a check-in in the reception and all and some other applications uh, that keep the people safe due to the COVID restrictions. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and what would you say are the main challenges your industry has, and particularly with COVID these days? Uh, first of all, our industry is the, it's the first industry that uh, goes in the e-commerce many, many years ago. Uh, so I think that the tourism industry is always a pioneer uh, at the mobile applications and so on. Uh, people used to buy uh, tourism uh, services through the, inter uh, with, uh, through the internet many, many years before. So all the things that we have to create must be kind of innovated because the people in this industry is very, uh, is very demanding of new technology and new things. Uh, the things with uh, COVID was uh, to automate some functions like uh, how a person in the restaurant could order without having uh, papers, uh, how a person could uh, make a fast check-in through in the hotel in order to avoid to be with many, many people in the reception, things like this. I will say that we were uh, rather ready before COVID arrived. So these things uh, was very easy for us to develop and of course to adapt them in a, into our applications. Yeah. Excellent. So you'd say that in your IT strategy, you have to be very responsive to change and would say in your strategy itself, you've actually predicted a lot of things and made sure you can do rapid development. Yes, we make a lot of R&D in order to see the trends of the next years. Because when we go in the big uh, tourism exhibitions, especially in Berlin and in London, uh, there is uh, a place in, the, in this exhibition that uh, they are presenting the new trends for the next decade or the next uh, five years. So uh, the mobile development and, uh, and, the, and the, as it is at the moment was being discussed about 10 years before. I remember that in the ITB London, that was a very big discussion uh, from a company that make a, uh, that make a, a, a paper uh, that was, uh, they were describing how a customer could open his room without having an actual key, but using the mobile phone. This was happening 10 years before. The technology wasn't there, but the idea was there. So in this industry, there are always very innovative uh, um, discussions before the technology that can cover uh, is there, but it will be in the future. So uh, we always have to search the new technologies and we we'll always have to be ready to adapt them. Excellent. So it sounds like um, you do a lot, you have a lot of new challenges, a lot of future things to do, and you've got to react quickly. I mean, do you have a large development team? Uh, actually, we don't have a very big development team. We are five uh, persons. Uh, I would say that all of them are uh, full stack Uniface developers, and one of them is uh, specialized in the mobile application development. Yeah, excellent. So, um, as a developer, um, what challenges do you face, and well, how does Uniface help? Actually, now in the tourism industry, everything is connected. Uh, you have a lot of, you have to communicate with a lot of suppliers, customers, uh, external services. Uh, uh, so you must have actually a platform 
that can very, very, uh, uh, in, uh, that you can write a few, a few uh, rows of code and to have a connection uh, with a new customer with a web service uh, via the internet. Also, it must be extensible in order not to rewrite the whole code. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, we have a software that uh, handles the transfer from the people that are arriving in the airport. And uh, the last year, we imagine that it's better to be connected with, an, uh, with a service that can give us exactly the time that the, air, that the airplane is uh, touching, uh, touching down to the airport in order to rearrange the transfer schedule if we, if it's, if, uh, if we need. This was happening by hand uh, and not automatically. And at the moment, uh, every five minutes, the systems ask the web service if this, uh, if this airplane has already arrived. And if it's arrived, it checks the time and make uh, the appropriate uh, rearrangements in the buses in order to fit all the customers, because may, probably most of them are coming uh, with three different airplanes, but they are touching at the same time at the, at the airport. Uh, this is amazing. The only thing we had to do is just to open the Uniface code, put the web service on top, and then write a few words of code and rearrange uh, the whole process. It's not so easy as I described it, but more or less uh, Uniface makes our life uh, very, very easier. On the other hand, when we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, some difficulties and we cannot work something with Uniface, we always have the option to use a signature. I can tell you that we have some cases that we are using Python because Python uh, can, in, can uh, communicate better with some web services that we have. And we have write them down with Python. But with, with the signature, actually Python becomes member of our application. So we can, uh, uh, the most, uh, the most, uh, the biggest challenge that we have but now is the communication between different systems and different technologies. And I think in that case, uh, Uniface is, is uh, doing that uh, very well. Yeah, excellent. So you've got multiple systems, but the integration layer of Uniface and the URB just makes that simple and then bringing it out to the mobile is straightforward for you. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, on the mobile applications, we are using web services. Actually, the Uniface is the back end, that all the information is coming and it's been, uh, been placed in Uniface. And through web services, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we are working on our mobile applications. I can tell you that in our mobile application, we can chat mechanism is working with and when someone write down a message in the in the mobile application, at the same time, the message appears with a synchronous interrupt in our desktop application in the reception. So Uniface gives us the ability to have it as our uh, main back office system, and, as, uh, and we can put a lot of other technologies, mobile technology, um, as we are speaking at the moment, that can work with uh, web services. Also, we have adapted some other technologies. We have adapted uh, the, uh, the business reporting, we have uh, adapted uh, Power BI into our desktop applications. Uh, web service is the future. And if you have an application that can call them very simply and very easy, then you gain a lot of time. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Um, I think you said, yeah, Unif you've been with Uniface now or Uniface customer for eight years. Um, why did you choose Uniface in the first place? And how did you find the journey of becoming proficient in Uniface? We started in Uniface eight years before. Someone here, someone here in Greece was working with Uniface. I think he must be the only one he was working with Uniface. And, he, and we were searching uh, for the next day uh, for a Hellenic Zeus group. Uh, we decided to create our own applications and not to buy from the, from the market because every time we need a lot of changes, the business will start to, to change rapidly day by day. So we need to create a platform that with very low resources to create uh, um, as much as business flow in our applications. So we decide we start to show different applications. I was working with Microsoft for the last 12 years and uh, I was working in a company that uh, was trying to create a platform 
in order to create rapidly software. When I saw when I see Uni, when I saw Uniface, uh, I was very enthusiastic because uh, with few things you can create application. We create our first desktop application for the DMC office in about six months. And from the other hand, the language itself, it's very straightforward and very easy to learn. It has very clear things, parameters, variables. When you are describing a language, you said that, OK, there must be some of the parameters, there must be some of the variables, and somehow there must be a cursor, a cursor to uh, the retrieve, the store, and everything. These things are very easy in Uniface, so it's very easy for someone who has a minimum uh, application developer background to start using it uh, immediately. Yep. Okay. And this was really exciting for us a yep. year before. Excellent. And yeah, so over the eight years, I mean, we often see it's very quick to build that first application. Um, how have you found the ongoing maintenance of the application um, over those eight years? Uh, if you if you have created your models, uh, um, if you create the proper models from the beginning, and if you keep some baselines, then the maintenance it's uh, it's very easy. Actually, with Uniface, the agility. It's something that you can do it very, very easily uh, because if you have uh, good, uh, good models, for example, if you have a good semantic, a good semantic model, if you have the product, it doesn't matter if the product has two columns or three columns in the beginning. Uh, then you can easily put a new column, put a new detail uh, entity, and so the maintenance in the Uniface is very easily, it's very easy if you have created a good and robust model from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, this is something that I think that everybody nowadays in the software industry can understand the semantic uh, um, the semantic model. And of course, in, the, in each application, there is an entity or table or whatever with the name customer and the name product. So I think that Uniface makes our life easier uh, to maintain big applications in a small uh, period of time. Yeah, excellent. So looking specifically at your mobile application now in the industry, there's three main ways. So whether it's a web application deployed on the web, uh, deployed on the mobile, I should say, um, a hybrid application, which tends to be one of the standard ways of doing it with Uniface or using APIs, um, you can then do a native app calling into Uniface via web services, um, whether that's REST or SOAP or whatever other mechanisms. And I know that you've gone through that journey. Um, so can you talk about the differences and your experiences between using hybrid and native with the API calls into Uniface? Of course. Uh, first of all, we start with, uh, we start with uh, web applications. And now in our, uh, in our company, we have uh, a lot of uh, web applications because uh, uh, we want the users to go in our intranet or in the extranet and uh, make some serious job with using the web application. And we start with the hybrid uh, mobile application. Um, our first application was about excursions, and we start with uh, the code of application made by Uniface. Uh, it wasn't so high demand. It wasn't a high demanding application. So it was very easy for us to take our existing web application, put a web view for the Android and the web 2K for iOS, and we have created our first uh, mobile application. Uh, we didn't, uh, we decided not to use the bulldozer at the beginning. So the compilation is being made by us uh, through um, a Mac that we had for the, for the iOS and uh, with, uh, with the Android Studio for the, for the, for the Android. Uh, we, see, but we saw that for B2, B2B application, it's more than enough because you don't care about the station, things, the user can log in, make some searches, make some inputs, uh, press, uh, probably export the PDF or something in the, in the, in the device, and everything goes easy. Uh, when in 2018, the company decided to adopt a new concept in the hotel with the name uh, Cook's Club, 
and they were talking about RFID Brussels and the customer could go with his mobile application and use it in the POS as a wallet and things like this, that we want a chart on the mobile application and want sophisticated things like this to read uh, to read the passport directly from the mobile app or to, to make payments on the mobile app, then we see that in such cases you need to, to work with the, with the native libraries of the, OE, of the operating system of the mobile phones and we decide to start with the native uh, mobile uh, development. Uh, in that case, if you decide to take that road, then for, for certain you need a mobile application developer, uh, one or sometimes two, depending on the application, uh, how debundable is the application. And, uh, but you can take the whole advantage of the operating system of the, uh, of the, of the, applica of the, of the, of the device. The other thing with the habit uh, technology is that if you need, if you are using Cordova, for example, and you need some sophisticated library, then you must uh, make a very serious uh, search in the internet in order to find the correct library, to test the correct library, and see if there's every stoppers or any variants to use this uh, library, uh, because it is something that is not controlled totally by you. From the other hand, in mobile application development, you have uh, a lot of also of problems. One of them is the depreciations. Uh, the operating systems are depreciating methods from uh, from uh, version to version, and sometimes without any notice. Imagine that we change our code from iOS to 12 to 13 and 14 because the variables are declaring them in a different way in version 12, and the version are declared in a different way in version 13 and 14. So mm -hmm. we always have to make some things in the, in, the, in, the, in our code in order to satisfy uh, both of uh, uh, all the users, even if, if they are holding version 12, even if they are holding version 13 or version 14. This is one of the biggest difficulties in the, in the native uh, application development because uh, the depreciations are very quite often. Okay, so... So native is giving you um, some of the greater advantages with the underlying device functionality. However, you then get the challenges or multiple code lines and mm -hmm. uh, things changing because of new releases. Um, so there are just the pros and cons and it becomes very um, uh, business specific of a particular requirement may determine whether you go native and then use Uniface as your mobile backend as a service or whether you go for hybrid and then just have that one code line. Yep. Exactly. In, in, in both cases, we were working with the same code on Uniface because we were working with uh, our, our web applications, are working with web, are, are using the web service of Uniface. We create it as a, as a standalone front end and we are calling the Uniface as a back end. So actually, you use the same web, the same web services when we went to the native application development. And this is very, very interesting because it was actually the same code. Uh, the only thing that we put more is that we create, uh, we make some changes in our web services in order to have the communication through Firebase because we are using Firebase, Google Firebase, as a notification, uh, as a notification system for the mobile application. Another thing that was very difficult to, to do it in hybrid was the notification because uh, actually when you're using the hybrid technology, we have somehow to handle the session. Uh, session cannot be live forever. Uh, yeah. And this is something that you cannot create notification in mobile application with hybrid technology, but with native technology, with native application develop, mobile application development, you can have uh, notifications because you are using the Singleton method. So always the session is always it's always alive. So someone can take the notifications if the application is running in the background. Uh, this is something that makes uh, uh, that is going to help you to take a decision. Uh, so actually, the decision it's a, it's a something about what you are expecting from your application. Yeah. Uh, if you have a, an application that is for B two B, and the only thing is that some users to go inside and and see some things or enter some things, then 
they have in technology, it's more than enough. But if you need some things like notifications and so on, then for sure, for sure you have to go, you have to go native. But of course, at the end, native is more expensive. You need yeah. uh, developers that they knew how to work with Xcode and of course with Android Studio. You must have the equipment because you cannot work with uh, iOS without having Mac devices. Uh, it's not it's not possible. And uh, of course, you have to follow always the uh, the new releases and the changes are by uh, are being made through iOS and uh, with uh, with Android Studio because they are always make changes. Sometimes they are depreciating uh, the methods, sometimes they are introducing new methods. And if you want really, really to take advantage of the power of the mobile device, then you have to, to follow the technology and uh, to read a lot. That's why in our company, we have one uh, dedicated mobile application developer. And I think that in the near future, we are going to make them two. Uh, that makes, from the beginning, this uh, this path make it from the beginning more expensive than the hybrid. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so um, I understand that you also have some um, uh, well, very neat functionality in your application, such as the offline usage and Elasticsearch using no SQL databases. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, we start. Uh, we have created an application. Uh, we have created well, not an application. We create uh, a hub in order to for someone to go and buy hotels. These uh, things are being connected with various reservation systems from some big uh, customers that we have, uh, and uh, these customers have always demanding to get the result for 400 or 300 hotels from one single search that they are making for grid, for roads or whatever, get all the results in once in less than two or three seconds. That means that with uh, the traditional RDBMS techniques, this is something that is not possible. So we decide to search and to see what is the, what is, what is the NoSQL database that fits better around our needs and it's going to be uh, very easily connected with Uniface. Uh, we make our sets and we find out that we are that we find out Arango, Arango DB. All all the things we you want to do with Arango DB, you can do it with uh, HTTP REST calls. So we adopted the database. We create our own framework with Uniface with HTTP REST calls, and now uh, we have uh, Arango DB as an RDBMS for this uh, for this kind of application. Actually. From the desktop, from the desktop application, we are loading hotels and prices in our AngoDB, and when we get a booking from our AngoDB, it's been downloaded to our mainframe, uh, to our legacy reservation uh, system. Uh, this is something I, I tell you before. With Uniface, you can adapt a variety of, the, of technologies because of the JSON, of the stack that Uniface has inside, and the and the web services that you can write down very quickly uh, a web service. And because of the signatures, actually we can, uh, you can uh, uh, adapt various technologies with Uniface. Imagine what with Arango, we have uh, two different paths. One ta the one path was to, to use the web services. And the second path is was to, to use uh, the native library that Arango DB has with Python because we can call Python through Uniface. So uh, we're having more than one options to be connected with the NoSQL database. Um, now we have created another hub for extensions. So I think all of our selling products, uh, all of them will be at NoSQL technology in the cloud, because in, in that way, and when, uh, in a way that you are writing the web services with the microservices techniques, you can have uh, very easily vertical and horizontal scaling. And this is very important because when you have uh, more than 200 hits per second, and uh, the Arango DB now it's on the Amazon, uh, it's on the Amazon, uh, we are getting a better tire. So we have more computing power and we can uh, increase uh, our, uh, we can decrease our response time. Uh, imagine that there is uh, schemas that you can put Arango DB 
that the same query could respond in one second, two seconds, or three seconds, depending the the machines that you have uh, installed behind the RangoDB. So I think this is the the future. I think that every, everything will go in the next uh, decade to no SQL databases. Yeah. So uh, that's good. So is your solution um, all um, deployed in the cloud or do customers have it on premise? And do you have plans for using containerization and microservices in the future? At the, at the moment, at the moment, some of all the new systems that we are creating, we are uh, we are putting them in, we are putting them in the cloud. Uh, we are uh, convinced for the containerization technology and uh, and for the micro and with the microservices because we have to split our legacy systems in small pieces uh, because it's not easy for us to to maintain them and load the new features uh, and load the new version of the web at the moment we must go uh, straight forward to the containerization and to the microservices because we have zero downtime applications. For example, we cannot, you cannot download, you cannot, uh, uh, you don't have, you cannot have downtime if you have an application that is selling and it's been connected with uh, other 10 or 20 two operators. You know, due to the time zone, it's not possible uh, to have downtime time to make your maintenance. So I think that uh, uh, the microservices and the containerization. It's the only way, it's the only way from now and on in order to develop applications. Yeah. Sounds even, good. even for the mobile applications, eh? because uh, the web services that we have in the back end for them for the mobile applications are also being made with uh, the like microservices in order for them also to be in, uh, in containers. Uh, because it's not good if you want to change one web service to to have downtime for all the web services. You must yeah. have a small downtime time for only web service, one web service, and everything else to be working uh, properly. So I yeah. think this is the only way. I think there is no other way in the future. Yeah, ah, sounds good. Um, so I guess to close. Um, how are you planning on extending things in the future, particularly around mobile? What sort of grand plans or ideas do you have for your mobile solution? Uh, at the moment, we are trying to create a library. We have uh, in our mobile application for the hotels, we had a library to recognize the passport and the ID cards in order to make the check-in more efficient and more automatically. But these libraries are very expensive. Imagine that we need about 20 or 30,000 uh, per year. Uh, so we are trying to create our artificial intelligence uh, model in order to put it in our in our web application and uh, to go on. Um, our future plans also to is to to adapt the e key in our application. Um, this also depends on the hardware of the of the of the, lock, of the locks of the locks of the of the rooms. And uh, I see pretty good ideas in the market, uh, which at the present moment we are speaking, we have put them under microscope and examine them how we are going to adapt them in our in our hotels. I see fantastic things in this industry. I see something in the exhibition in, in London three years ago before COVID that uh, a hotel chain they create an application that was scanning the faces of the customers to see uh, how is their satisfaction together with the menu that was served that day and with uh, uh, the temperature at the, at the environment and the music that was playing at the same time. I think that the future is the artificial intelligence uh, together with uh, uh, the business solutions application that analyzing the data and give uh, key features back to the to the management in order to see how is the best way to operate their business. Yeah, that's a key trend we see. It's all about the data these days and analyzing that data to provide that best service. Of course, but the data are, are, are big data and now you cannot analyze this kind of data in a PC. For, for, for certainly you need uh, 
big uh, big computing, big devices. So uh, the only way to train models and to analyze this kind of data is on the cloud. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, um, I've learned a lot about your solution and the journey you've taken, and it's good to see the pros and cons of your choices, and also, yeah, some of the exciting stuff you've got planned for your future. So, yeah, from Uniface, I would just say, like to say thank you for your um, time, Thomas, and the information you provided. You're welcome. It was very interesting also for me. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, uh, Lennox Soos, and also thank you, uh, Jason, for your very interesting uh, presentations about uh, building Uniface mobile applications. Uh, I see there's a lot of uh, things going on still at the uh, at the chats lines. The lines are still open, so if you have questions, please uh, share them. And there are still a few uh, discussions going on about uh, incoming uh, remarks and uh, and questions. So that's that's very good. Uh, keep on uh, keep on doing that. Um, like I already said, this was our third uh, session of the uh, Uniface Universe webinar. 2021 and uh, we're entering the, the summertime and I think most of us are going on, on holiday so uh, enjoy the uh, the holiday season and uh, stay healthy and we look forward to, uh, to see you again in uh, another uh, line of sessions uh, after the summer holidays. You will be uh, yeah, notified via uh, our email systems and uh, so keep watching your inbox for uh, follow-up about uh, other uh, very interesting Uniface topics. Again, join the summer holiday and see you soon. Bye-bye.